This is an example of how to use the Atlas find and replace function to uh, delete an existing demand forecast in AX and replace it with a new one. For starters we want to change to designer mode so we'll go up to the upper left in the ribbon bar click on designer and we're going to go over to the find and replace function within the upload group within the Atlas ribbon bar. That opens up the Atlas task pane. We want to find the table called demand forecast. Then we'll tick the table and go to the filters tab. Within the filters tab we want to set the customer account to a name range default of equal customer account Cust account ID. We want to right click on the date row and choose the default of equal start date. And in the model row, we want to enter a hard coded value of model number 100, which exists in our AX database. We then move to the find and replace tab sometimes called the output or input tab and we want to highlight the find and replace demand forecast node up here and we want to choose properties I'm sorry we want to choose fields and that brings up all the default fields we're going to untick all of the default fields Then we're going to reselect the model number or model field, the item number, the date, the quantity, and the customer account. Okay, we can apply what we've got. Then we're going to select some more fields from the available fields node within this same table and we want to choose the field called comments and we also want to uh, select a field called dimension number dimension number okay we'll apply the dimension number okay now we need to join the dimension number table or the dimensions inventory dimensions table to the demand forecast table so we can configure the specific dimensions for the item we're going to upload. And so we will click on the inventory dimensions available fields list and we will choose size site warehouse dimension number Configure it, configuration and color. Click apply, click OK. So at this point, we've got this many fields, but we're not done. So what we're going to do here is go to the next logical step is we're going to assign criteria. We'll start with the item number, right click the item number choose the default name of item ID equal item ID we'll go to date choose equal start date we'll go to quantity equal sales quantity customer account equal cust account ID comments equal comments and then we're going to skip to the color the color is invent color ID. The site the configuration is config ID. We're going to skip this dimension number. The site is invent site ID. The size is invent size ID. And the warehouse is invent location ID. 
All right, as you all already know, you need to make sure that there are corresponding names mapped to the cells in the worksheet. And there they are. They've already been done for you. Okay, uh, next thing we want to do here is finish configuring our criteria. Notice we've skipped a few. So we'll go back up to Model. We'll right click Model, go to Properties. Move the paint off to the side so I can see what I'm doing. And we want a hard coded value of model number 100. Okay, hit enter. Go to the next, hit the next button until I get to item number. And in the item number, we want to go down to the X plus plus table methods and choose knit from invent table. Init from invent table it is in here somewhere. Okay. We've already assigned a named range of equal item ID. Now we've assigned an X plus plus table method, which is automatically going to uh, populate certain fields that are initialized from the invent table within the demand forecast table upon upload. Um, if you would like to see exactly what happens, you can go into the AOT and take a look at that method, read the code. It will tell you exactly which fields are, are being updated. We want to continue here and we go to the customer account field. And there it is. We've also got a name range assigned, but we also want to assign an X plus plus method, which is going to do for the customer what the other X plus plus method did for the item. So we want invent from or init from cus table. Click OK. Um, this is going to initialize certain records from the customer account table, from the customer table, and um, set them within the demand forecast. Uh, okay, so I'll click apply just to be sure. Now we're going to move down to the dimension number field in the demand forecast table. So that would be this one here, the dimension number in the demand forecast table, not this one in the inventory dimensions table. So we'll click on this dimension number and we want to choose the field child field list. This is going to tell Atlas and AX during the upload process that while in the demand forecast uh, table, go look to the dimension number table to find the dimension values, that is color, configuration, size, site, and warehouse. So we specify that the dimension number in the demand forecast table needs to go down and find the child field list. To finish configuring this, we choose the lookup, that's the magnifying glass, and then we tick invent dim ID and click OK. Notice that Atlas, after I click apply here, adds this string um, into the value box and or the criteria field, whatever you'd like to call it. Okay, we can then move down and configure the remaining dimension fields. They all must be set to unique. So color unique, configuration unique. We don't have to configure the inventory dimensions table dimension number field that will get auto populated. The site is unique. The size is unique. The warehouse is unique. And I think we're done. Let's do a quick check. Scroll up and down here. All the fields are configured. They've got criteria and or you could call these values. And they've got um, properties set this dimension number we don't need to configure it should get auto populated at this point we need to remember to insert what we've done into the document so I'll click insert I'll go back to the data sources tab and refresh 
and when I refresh the task pane I can see that I have a template called demand forecast that has now been inserted into this document. We're almost ready to upload but what we need to do is we need to put in some forecast information and notice here that the table is currently empty. One thing you may not have noticed because we didn't talk about it embedded in this document is a structured list report. So I'm going to key in a different customer here and hit enter and when I do that because I've changed a filter which triggers an update I can see that I've got a structured list report based on the demand forecast table for these filters for these outputs or the same outputs we see here and lo and behold I've pulled the existing forecast for customer 2202 and these items out of AX uh, and so here we've got the configuration uh, the dimensions for that item and the existing forecast quantities and here they are right here okay what we want to do and this was our overall objective is to change the forecast quantities so in the quantities column we'll type 24 then 30 12 and 48 okay we're now ready to do the upload so we change from designer to standard mode choose find and replace from the menu make sure that the demand forecast template is chosen and it is select the confirmation tab then click the upload button and we can see that we've successfully passed AX Business Connector validation. Four records were deleted. That was the old forecast that I originally downloaded. And four new records were added. These are the records that I added in here. So you can go into AX and take a look at the forecast for customer number 2202. Let's open up AX. Customer 2202, Black Curve Airport, uh, forecast. There's the forecast right here. And we have successfully uploaded our new forecast. There's the model number. The dates are all the same. The item is the same, but the dimensions are different for each line. And the quantities are different for each configuration. So there you have a simple example of using Atlas Find and Replace to update an existing forecast.